These days, we're surrounded by things like Chromebooks, Pinebook Pros, and, and devices. I mean, the Chromebook is the perfect example of a device that utilizes the internet mm -hmm. as an app infrastructure. Right. So I think about things like, uh, like my Google Drive and Google Docs and Google Sheets and, and, and how those are very fast becoming my applications for doing things like document editing. Mm -hmm. I don't install Microsoft Office anymore. No. Right. I use in my browser my Google Docs. That's what right. I use. That's how I do it. You, but, even Microsoft, like Word and all that, you can they've got online browser yeah. based. Like Outlook has gone into the cloud. It's mm -hmm. like a browser based thing. But so these are all things that they used to be applications on our computer and now they're progressively becoming more and more cloud driven. And that means they are accessible through your web browser. But there's kind of like that old school feel about having the native app on your computer, having, you know, to do it in your web browser feels like you're going on a website to do it in the app feels like you're opening a program and, and, and there's less screen real estate that's wasted to things like the address bar. Yes. And yeah. Bookmarks and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. prime example, QuickBooks online. Perfect. Uh, I use that for yeah. an organization that I'm with. And it's funny because I have it installed on the computer. Yeah. But then I can also log in and, and use it online on my personal computer. Mm -hmm. Looks exactly the same. Runs exactly the same. Yeah. But even psychologically within my head, I'm like, I would rather use the app. Right. Because it's the app. It's a web browser and you've got the address bar and everything yeah. else. So there have been applications and, and browsers themselves have things like app mode and, and abilities to create a bit more of a native feel to websites right. so that they feel more like native apps. But there's, it's, it's never really been solidified as a standard. So what rises up and then fizzles away, like Firefox used to have a great mechanism for doing this, mm -hmm. for creating an app kind of uh, window for your, for your browser sessions, but it got discontinued. So then it just fizzled out. But Peppermint OS has done something incredible with a tool that they call ICE. And okay. ICE is, so what they call this is SSB, which is a site-specific browser. But the interface is really unique in that it, it is specifically, it's not a web browser that allows you to save an icon to your desktop that simply opens that website every time you double click on it, no. It's, it creates launchers on your Linux computer mm -hmm. that look like the, the, they look like a native application. It removes okay. all of that browser um, stuff around the edges and everything else. Oh, very cool. But they've made it very, very simple. But I'm not using Peppermint. Okay. I'm actually using Linux Mint. And on Linux Mint, which is a Debian derivative, it's also, uh, it's based on Ubuntu, and this will go for Ubuntu. What, what I want to show you is for any Debian-based distro. So that's Debian, obviously, Ubuntu, Mint, Linux Mint. So I'm on Linux Mint 19, and it's, uh, it's fine for me to do those things, uh, this on any of those distros. Okay, so I'm going to jump into my web browser, my current one, which is Google Chrome, and I'm going to jump over to, now observe this URL that I'm going to type in here, peppermintos.com slash guide slash ice. And when I bring that up, here we go, an introduction to site-specific browsers. They've got a great example there with, uh, with the pixel editor, which is a web-based image editor, but by using ICE, it looks like a native app on the computer. It really does. How sweet is that? The interface is stellar. But because I'm not on Peppermint OS, it doesn't, it's not available okay. on my distro, right? However, Peppermint OS is open source. Right. It's Debian based. If you've got a Debian based machine, you're able to install the things that they have open sourced and compiled for their distro on my distro. So here I am on Linux Mint. Let's 
see if this is going to work for us. So we're going to grab the source from, not the source, but a, a binary packages from launchpad.net slash tilde peppermint OS slash plus archive slash Ubuntu slash ice dash dev slash plus packages. And this takes us to the packages folder for the ICE development from the Peppermint OS team. And you see the latest version at the time of this broadcast is version 6.07.0.7, I should say. So I'm going to click on that and let's take a look at what we have here. We've got packages and builds. Here's a build for AMD 64. So because I am on a 64-bit Intel processor, I'm okay to click on that and download the build. There's the Debian package right there. And here it comes. I'm going to keep that file. And then I'm going to click on it. Presumably DPKG is going to try to launch it and ask me what I want to do. What is this? Web app integration for Peppermint Ice. Front end. Blah, blah, blah. Install package. Gotta love the way Linux makes installers these days. Yeah, it's so much easier than the default where you used to have to log into terminal. Yeah. Compiling from source. I mean, you can do that. So maybe you're not on AMD 64 and you need to compile. All right. So uh, that's done. What's changed? Close everything out. Nothing's changed. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to type in ice. And lo and behold, there's an application now on my computer called ice. And just like that, I've got my simple uh, what is it called? SSB is a site specific browser. They call it a simple site specific <laughs> browser manager. Okay. So it's this easy to create launchers. And when I say a launcher, I'm talking, you know, how onerous it can be to add things to like your internet category here. Let's say we want to turn YouTube into an app. So okay. let's call this YouTube. And the URL is https colon slash slash youtube.com. And where on the menu? I'm actually not going to put it in internet, even though it's a website. I'm going to put it in multimedia. Ooh. Wow. What do I want the icon to look like? I'm going to try this use uh, site fave icon. I have yet to see that work. It doesn't seem to work. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click on my browser and I'm going to type YouTube icon. I'm going to jump into images. I'm going to click on tools. I'm going to click on color. I'm going to choose transparent. Then I'm going to grab a transparent YouTube icon. It doesn't have a background. I'm going to save that to my computer. I'm going to throw that into pictures. I'm going to make a folder called icons and save it there. Done. Now I have a file that quickly. So go into my home, into where did I put it? Pictures. Where's pictures? There it is. Okay. Um, icons, YouTube. All right. So now I've chosen the YouTube icon. There we go. Do easy. I notice it will support Chrome, Chromium, Vivaldi, or Firefox. So that's the back end it's going to use. Then it also, so I'm going to choose Chrome because that's my browser. Okay. It's detected that I also have Firefox on here, but I don't use it. Uh, create an SSB with an isolated browser profile. That means that within this app, if you will, you are not going to, um, it's not going to share the session with your real browser. So if oh, I've okay. logged into YouTube in Chrome, if I don't have that checked, it will also, it, it will be logged in in the app. So it's almost like an incognito mode, sort of. But it will, no, it's more like its own profile. Okay. So you can log into your YouTube profile but it will only be logged in there. So then simil uh, so by contrast, okay. in Chrome, you will not be logged in. Right. Okay. Cool. So you can choose and, and feel free to play with that setting. See what, what way you want it to be. So I'm going to say, yes, I want this to be an isolated browser with Chrome. And I'm going to go apply. Well, again, it doesn't seem to have done anything. But if I click on my Linux Mint menu and I go into sound and video, I now see a button called YouTube. No way. Click on it. Uh, these things, uh, let's uncheck these things just because it is, see, because remember, it's created a new profile. Right. So I'm going to say, okay. 
And now I'm going to close that just because now that I've done that, I want to show you from scratch now that I've turned off those things. So sound and video, YouTube, it's not going to ask me those things again. Okay. So YouTube is now its own window, its own app. It's, it's oh. going to behave very, very much like an app. But it's using Chrome as its background, as its back end. Right. So if you find that Chrome performs better than Firefox, choose Chrome. If you find it's the other way around, use Firefox. Right. If you want to remove one of those launchers from your menu, so say I want to remove YouTube, I can actually go to Remove tab in ICE, highlight it, and click on Remove, and that will actually get, it, get rid of it. You can do as many of these as you want if you want to add like a Category 5 TV. Uh, let's say look, maybe you want to do the live category five live. So let's do that. Let's go live.cat5.tv. So then um, whenever uh, and, and you'll probably want our icon for the sake of the, the speed of tonight's demonstration. I'm not going to do that right now, but you already saw how to do that. OK, so category five live is under sound and video. There it is up there. Again, turn these things off. Oh, I put like a underscore or something, but it's, oh, no, it's, still, it's still working. So, so now I've got a, a launcher for category five when, when we're live. So when we're live, we can, boom, there we go. Wow. Inception, right? That's super, super easy. How cool is that? So it is super, super easy, really quick, works really well. It's effective and it's supported. It's open source and it's available on any Debian distro just like that with a D, DEB file. Uh, it's already compiled for AMD 64, and I think you'll find other com compiles there as well if you dig through. Nice. So check that out. It's called Ice, and it's from the folks who bring us Peppermint OS. Thank I you for like it. Thank you for yeah. that. That's a great it tool.